So I'll, I'll kind of approach it from really two key perspectives. There's really the expectations for how you run your business, right? And workflow, I think, is the key word. Automation is the key word. You know, how do you eliminate low value activity? So yes, I need it. I need my tech stack to have an API uh, in front of it. I need, um, you know, these these building blocks or these sort of. Um, I need the plugs in the wall so I can plug the lamp in and get power and turn it on, right? But without that, I can't do anything. And so the API is really just that. The API is access, it's, but you got to do something with it. And so understanding what your workflow is, under, understanding how to automate, understanding what tools you're going to use to do that. Uh, at the end of the day, we talk about it at Trimble about, you know, this whole idea of, uh, you know, the connected construction workflow. It needs to be configurable. Uh, the workflow needs to be customizable on a per customer basis. It can't just be completely locked in. And this is how it works. You you change your you change how you do business to the way that we tell you to. That's not how technology works. That's the tail wagging the dog, right? So I think expectations are going to raise for how we think about helping these companies ultimately get um, and and take advantage of interoperability. It's not just that that it needs to be possible. Is that it needs to be reality, and that it needs to be, you know, very easy to customize, very easy to configure, very easy to morph into what ultimately each company decides is their competitive advantage. That's what. That's why they're there. That's why they're using the tech. That's why they have business processes that set them apart. Um, they're better at. I'm better at this than you are, and I can demonstrate that in the way that I've built my company to operate. Right, and then I'll, I'll kind of lean into this one and then let maybe Nathan take it a, a little further, but spanning ecosystems, I think is going to be the next uh, sort of critical component for this specific to the construction industry. You know, the predominance of, um, you know, digital collaborative project management solutions, Procore, Autodesk, Trimble, uh, there, there are others, but when you look at sort of the big players in, in terms of project management, you got to use my system. Now you got to use my system. Now you got to use my system. Um, that type of issue is only going to continue to to compound, and so the network effect is going to put pressure, I think, on the on the tech providers to ultimately offer an, a solution to that because you know you can't keep data in your system and then have to integrate into 17 different GC systems that you're using across 17 projects, right? And so uh, those types of issues become a lot more relevant. And again, it can't just be an expectation that uh, it's possible to solve. They expect the solution to be readily developed and, and available. Well, and I think that, yeah, you, you said that well, and I think the inflection point that we're at now and, and use the, the new format Procore uh, integration that you guys built, what, back in 2019, uh, yep. that is, you know, now arguably kind of the, the most used cross AEC stakeholder um, integration for RFIs. But, you know, what, what that took was both companies saying, yes, we're open API, but also a, a person in the middle, Rivet at the time, now uh, Trimble Data Exchange, to essentially figure out a way that works for both sides and, and to be mm -hmm. at Neuforma's conference and to hear how much they're talking about the benefits and the value of um, of using this Procore integration. And then, you know, obviously it would, at, at Procore, it's, uh, it's uh, ironically at Procore, they don't know that much about it because they don't see it, right? It doesn't change mm -hmm. their workflow. And, right. and so but I, what I think is that inflection point is the fact that you have two different stakeholders that want to maintain their own system. Because I, I, even this morning, I learned a new term being Procord, that engineers or architects, oh yeah, I got, I got Procord, because they don't have their own system and they're just being invited and they can end up using the GC system. And in those cases, they probably don't mind it very much, but they don't realize that they're not managing their own data. Like there are all these things right. that they could be doing um, if they had their own system. But by doing so, you can now end up in this conundrum where I now still need to talk to that Procore system. So you know, here comes Rivet, here comes the, the data exchange team and everything. So it's like all these different pieces are now coming together, but it's still teaching everyone like the, to go from where we are today to where we need to go. It's, it's always three steps forward, two steps back. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll keep pushing that rock up the hill. Exactly. And, and and again, I think the message for the audience is to continue to put pressure, I think, um, 
you know, really, uh, you got you got to put pressure on your peers a, a bit because Nathan, you and I have talked about this. Jeff, we talked about this a lot. It's not just a tech problem, right? Like technology can solve the problem if it's well articulated. It will solve the problem if it's well articulated. Um, but sometimes just understanding a little bit more about how, how, as an industry, what's the best practice for how we pursue this type of uh, stakeholder uh, collaboration on a project uh, for particular workflows. Uh, having more and better definition around some of the problems that exist uh, can help tech, right? But we've got to get past the point where we're just expecting the building blocks to be there. I need you to have an API. Um, and we've got to start expecting the, the the solution to come to life in a way that is more accessible. Uh, and from my perspective, that sort of workflow element is really important because you've got to be able to just configure that thing, right? How do we set this project up so everybody understands where the data is going to move, how the data is going to move, creating that brokerage system of um, rules and negotiation and agreement in terms of when are you authorized to access my data? When am I authorized to access your data? Like those types of things have to be there. And so, you know, my hope is that we continue to see that evolution occur where we get beyond asking for the capabilities to exist, the building blocks to be there, and we start really getting into more solutioning and, and deployment and use and adoption.